slides will be provided afterwards. And um, now let's start. I will now give the floor to Oliver Köppler and Irina Mosgova. Oliver Köppler is one of the spokespersons of NFDI for Chem. He received his PhD in organic chemistry from the Technical University of Braunschweig. He's working in the area of digital libraries and data science for chemistry at the TIB Leibniz Information Center of Science and Technology since 15 years. Since 2019, Oliver is head of the lab linked science scientific knowledge at the TEB. Irina Mosgova is active in the NFDE for ING task areas Golo and the base services. She received her PhD in automated control systems and information technologies from the National Aviation University in Kiev, Ukraine. She's working at the Institute of Product Development at the Leibniz University Hannover since 2011. Irina is head of the group methods of product development. And now give the floor to Oliver. Thanks Dorothea for the kind introduction. So um, welcome to our joint webinar today. And um, I would like to start with a very, very brief introduction to the National Research Data Infrastructure, the NFDI. That's why we are all here. So for a more detailed overview, um, please take a look at the excellent introductory videos by the German Research Foundation. Um, you can find the links to these videos here on, on the slides and they are located at YouTube. So in the recent years, it has become visible and more urgent that we need a better research data management. Today, new research results are increasingly obtained by drawing on existing data. For this reason, we need easy access to transparent and high quality research data. Um, there's already a wide range of uh, data services available locally um, at universities, non-university research institutions and other information infrastructure institutions. And to make the most out of the research data there, is the need to federate these services and to fill the remaining gaps with new services. And that's the aim of the NFDI, which is currently built up. The vision of the NFDI for <clears throat> is to make research data fair, which means data is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. NFDI aims to systematically manage research data, provide long-term storage, and accessibility and to link the data both nationally and internationally. This is achieved by a network of consortia providing science-driven and user-driven data services for the specific research disciplines and their communities. And today's webinar is a joint effort, a joint event by three of the NFDI consortia of the first funding period, which started in October last year. And in the following slides, I would like to give you a very short overview of NFDI for chem, for chemistry, NFDI for ink, for engineering sciences, and NFDI for cut, for catalysis. So the NFDI for chem consortium aims to represent all areas of chemistry within the NFDI. We focus on data related to molecules and reactions, including data for the experimental and theoretical characterization. The vision of the NFDI is the full digitization of data workflows from the earliest point in time in the lab to the final data publication based on open standards and tailored to the community needs. Starting from experimental data in the lab, we would capture information in electronic lab laboratory notebooks in semantically rich form and together with data from instruments kept in laboratory information management systems enable data processing and data analysis. From there, fair and semantically rich data will be flowing into local and public repositories adhering to open standards so that they can be reused by everybody in the world and then trigger a new cycle of research activities. NFDE for Inc. aims to represent the heterogeneous field of engineering sciences. Seven archetypes represent typical challenges that arise in engineering and will be addressed in close cooperation between infrastructure and research. The community clusters ensure the integration of various 
disciplines within the engineering sciences. The aim is to develop services, standards, and guidelines for data and code, <coughs> code handling so that um, um, we can build up reproducibility and reusability of engineering research results. And finally, NFDI for CAT covers all aspects in the fields of catalysis research. The core challenge in improving the fundamental understanding and the development workflows in catalysis is building a bridge between theory and experiments. Another challenge is to develop the catalyst and taking into account chemical engineering constraints, that is to integrate catalyst and process development workflows. Both challenges require better interdisciplinary collaboration between mathematical and theoretical sciences and experimental chemistry chemical engineering and material science. Methods will be developed to describe phenomena at all length scales, ranging from individual atoms and molecules, to reactors and chemical processes in a digital way. Um, fair data, uh, fair digital objects play a central role for sustainable research data management and catalysis as well, in order to enable a complete digital catalysis value chain from molecules to chemical processes the development of metadata schemes and vocabularies should be coordinated over all subdisciplines and catalysis and related disciplines like chemical engineering. So all the consortia are just introduced briefly, and of course, all the other six consortia of the first funding period of the NFDI depend on ontologies to build up the data services. Um, but before we come to ontologies, let's stay with research data a little bit longer and um, look at the vision of the European Open Science Cloud, as you can read it in their strategic implementation plan. Wouldn't it be great if you would be able to combine any data set with any other data set we would want to? So combining any data set we want, that's what comes or becomes reality when we implement the FAIR data principles for research data. But why are ontologies important for managing research data and how do they support us by combining any data we want? A plethora of data is produced every day and with a tremendous increase in the amount of data, new ways to store and annotate data are necessary to ensure fulfilling the FAIR data principles and to enable new and efficient research based on data science. As a prerequisite for the reuse of data, data need to be interoperable and understandable, not only by humans, but also by machines, by software. So let's take a look at a very, very simple example of a data set. So maybe these different columns and the values have been gathered from different heterogeneous data sources. The heading of the columns with the T may indicate some sort of temperature value. What, what kind of temperature? And is the temperature expressed in degrees Celsius or in Kelvin? Somehow the temperature waves are related to different chemical compounds uh, like ethanol, and methanol, benzene, you can see here. As a human and with some domain knowledge from chemistry, from catalysis or engineering, you may have a vague idea about the meaning of the data, but a computer or a software code doesn't have any clue at all. You might program a parser to read these strings and integers into an array but that doesn't mean that the software understands the meaning of the data here. So the data is missing context and semantics. So in the first step, let's add these, a little bit more context to the data. Now you can see what kind of temperature we are looking at, the units as well. So boiling temperature, flash temperature, auto ignition temperature. But still there might be open questions left for us. So for example, how was the flash temperature measured? Was it done using the Pensky-Martens test or the Abel-Pensky test? We don't know. And our computer is still as clueless as before. For a computer, we need a formal and coded representation of the semantics of the data, which can be achieved by using an underlying ontology of a knowledge domain. You can see a simplified formal representation of the data on the left a data representation that can be indeed interpreted by a machine. So we have increasing amounts of data which can only be handled by computers these days. 
And computers are having a hard time understanding data as we do. They lack the domain knowledge to put data into perspective. At the same time, research questions are getting more complex, requiring knowledge from different domains even. So what needs to be done? We need to describe, to describe our data providing contextual information about the generation, devices used, methods applied to process and analyze them. And we want to describe the data in a way that it's not only, not only interpreted by humans, but also by machines. We will look, <clears throat> we will take a look on how this description and notation of data can be done in a way to produce linked data and what ontologies are and what they are used for. You will hear about some basic concepts of knowledge engineering, but we are gonna try to stay in your knowledge domain. Using knowledge graphs of linked data, we can represent the meaning involved in the data and information by describing concepts, relationships, relationships between things and categories of things. These embedded semantics within the data offer significant advantages such as reasoning over data and dealing with heterogeneous data sources. In the following, we will look at our different disciplines. What are the objects, the activities, and the relations we need to describe in an explicit formal way? So we are starting with the engineering sciences and look at a concrete object from the real world, a semi-finished workpiece. The object can be described by its properties such as length, diameter, or its material combination. However, this is not everything. Because this workpiece does not exist alone, but in a given environment, there are other objects that interact with it in a certain way. The workpiece was processed and might be further processed using machines and devices to shape it into a specific geometry and to form a final product. These objects, the machines, devices, workpieces, and the process have a certain relation or relationship to each other. When we put these relations into words and try to describe them, we create a certain background knowledge that describes the small real world of the semi-finished workpiece. This knowledge is not easily transferred into the computerized world because, as I already tried to point out, natural languages has no meaning to machines. To make this background knowledge machine readable, we have to consider two things. We shall find the way to denote real objects in a form readable by machines, and we shall express the relations between all these objects. So the same observations and conclusion can be drawn in the chemistry world when looking at molecules, their reactions, and their properties. Uh, a reaction can be described using reactant product reaction conditions like a solvent reaction temperature and the yield. We can conduct a specific reaction like a Diels-Alder cyclization with a specific diene and a specific alkene as shown here in the reaction scheme. And the Diels-Alder cyclization represents a reaction of a class of the four plus two cyclizations. The environment of the reaction can be described by an experimental procedure, experimental setup with glassware and devices and the molecules involved are characterized by a vast range of measurement data like NMR or MS spectra. And finally, in the world of catalysis, we rediscover objects and processes from the chemistry world, like molecules and reactions extended by the perspective of chemical engineering with reactors, thermokinetics, and scale-up questions. We examine processes uh, on packed bed reactors and uh, capture and analyze data from inlet and outlet streams. Again, the challenge is to describe the implicit knowledge about objects and how they relate to each other in an explicit way that is machine readable and understandable. So let's jump into the cold water and take a look at the definition, the definition of an ontology. An ontology is a formal explicit specification of a shared conceptualization. Formal means here machine-readable description using a formal language. Explicit specification means that concepts, properties, relations, constraints, and axioms are explicitly defined. Shared refers to agreed upon by a group or applications, and conceptualization is what defines an abstract model describing a particular field of knowledge. So with an ontology, we can describe things in our world by profiling a set of machine-readable statements. It contains links, descriptions, and classification of terms, and explicitly defined relationships between them. 
But what are the pitfalls or the possible pitfalls and the loopholes we need to consider on our way to, to develop and form an explicit specification of our world? Humans are using natural language to communicate and to express their knowledge, to describe their world. And language is defined as a system of conventional spoken ma manual of written symbols that combine to convey meaning and by means of which human beings express themselves. Here on this slide, you can see the semiotic triangle, a model of how linguistic symbols are related to the objects they represent. Ideally, symbol, concept, and object should perfectly match, leaving no room for ambiguity. But that's not <coughs> very often not the case, and the meaning is not communicate, communicated correctly. We have to deal with different spellings and terms, different languages, homonyms, synonyms, and sub and generic terms while modeling our world. Here on this slide, we have the symbol alcohol, a written word in English. It stands for an object of the real world. By alcohol, I might mean a bottle of wine, beer, vodka, or I can mean the chemical compound ethanol or methanol. Just looking at the symbol, you have no idea which object I refer to. The symbol might awaken different concepts in the minds of different people. So we have to realize that a symbol doesn't directly link to an object. A symbol only awakens a thought, a mental image, a concept, which then refers to an object of the real world. So two chemists talking about alcohol in the lab will probably refer to a bottle of ethanol, while a chemist and the engineer talking about alcohol at a party will probably refer to the bottle of wine on the table. So the interpretation, oops, sorry, what's the wrong one? The interpretation of symbol within a communication and referring to an object of the real, real world depends on the mantics, context, experience, and shared content, uh, concepts. And because of these limitations, uh, we need a formal representation of knowledge from machines. You may formalize knowledge representations and several steps finally leading, leading to an ontology with a strong formalization, strong semantics and axioms to constrain and disambiguate meaning. You may start to organize your knowledge with less structure and less functions and therefore weaker semantics. Structures can range from flat to multi dimensions, may include elimination of ambiguities, control of synonyms, hierarchy and associate relationships and properties. Climbing up the staircase, the number of semantic relations between terms and attributes for each class increase. You may also argue that along the semantic staircase, the ontological precision is increasing. So let's make, make our first steps on that staircase um, all together in a short and inter um, active practical exercise. Um, with this exercise, we want to try to create a shared understanding of terms related to the concepts of substance and material. You will realize how challenges, challenging that can be to define a term as an instance of a concept which requires, requires precise thinking, negotiation between the parties, parties which are going to commonly use it in their communication. And for this exercise, I kindly ask you to move to the Padlet we prepared in advance um, you will find it uh, in the chat window of the Zoom um, channel. And here I would like uh, to give over to my colleague, Kurt Willis, uh, who will explain the rules for the exercise for you. Yes, thank you, Oliver. Mm, so if you click on the link that is provided in the chat, if you do not yet see the chat, then you will find the, the button to, the, to open the chat window at the bottom of your Zoom screen, and uh, if you click on the button on the link, then you, oops, what is that? Somebody did something strange here. Um, okay, that is, uh, I never tested this, uh, this link here for so many people. Something is wrong here. Mm, so it does not work for so many, let us see. Somebody did something strange. Mm, let's do some, this another way. So let's use instead, let's use an etherpad. So what we are trying to do is we are combining our knowledge of different disciplines and we are connecting, we are collecting terms 
that are that are connected that are connected to two concepts which might be the same concept so now if you click please click on the link in the again provided in the um, in the chat we are switching to another tool so welcome back from a short exercise to the theoretical part uh, as we have seen there are many different terms relating to different fields of knowledge uh, which can be grouped together which we can uh, write in such situation and uh, there are many forms of knowledge representation uh, some are listed in this diagram according to the uh, to their formal expressiveness and the more formally expressive a form of knowledge representation is the more valuable the stored data information and knowledge for machine processing in these six listed forms of knowledge representation are explained in more detail in the next slide that follow. Now, in our little exercise, you have collected some definitions, some terms. Let's see what next step we can take, for example. So, for example, as next step, we can use uh, norms and standards to create and control it vocabulary for the collected pool of definitions or terms. A controlled vocabulary is a set of terms of a knowledge domain where each term is uniquely assigned a label. The next logical step can be to create a hierarchy of a definitions. I think a lot of people want to do this if we collect some terms. Here, right, you can see some example for such collection, uh, but you already see that we collect a lot of different terms. Uh, and is the questions, is it always possible to describe some unique universal uh, taxonomy, some, some hierarchy, or we should take another way. But firstly, some first logical step to describe, to develop some taxonomy. So taxonomies are based on vocabularies and enable a hierarchical classification of terms. The question is, is it always necessary or always possible to create or use a hierarchy of terms? Or what to do when several different hierarchies need to be combined? For example, as next step, we can build some topical map or semantic network. Topical maps are formal models consisting of concept and relations. A concept can stand for a concrete object or for a class of, of object. The relations describe the connections between the concepts. So you can see here some small example. Okay. You can see example of small topical map. At the beginning, if we begin, for example, here, the student, we have the concept student. And for example, a student is related to the concept person or university or study. We can add also another concept. And so we can build our topical map, this different art of a relationship between object. The topical map can be used to present not only hierarchical structures, but also more complicated relationship between concepts. A topical map can be visualized by a graph, as you can see here. The concepts are represented as, uh, as nodes and relations can be represented as arrows. 
to formalize of different art of statement, we can represent them as triples. They are based on the sentence structure of our natural language and consist of subject, object, and predicate. So you can see here some example. Subject and object are object of a domain of knowledge. Predicate, so subject and object, and predicate represents the relationship between subject and object. Triples are a formal requirement and can be processes, processed by machines. If you don't know what an ontology, what an ontology is, imagine a combination of some number, numbers of triples. The relations within an ontology can be divided into object-related relations and data-related relations. So you can see in this example already some combinations of triples uh, and relation between them. So we can be, build some ontology as a combination, as a logical connection of several triples. The object-related relations describe relations that exist between two classes and data related relations can assign a characteristic to a class in the form of string or, for example, numbers. So you already listened some very important definition in ontology class, but you maybe still don't know what is this. So an ontology is a formal explicit specification of a shared conceptualization. Ontologies follow the basis idea of the topical map. However, ontologies can be used to model more complicated knowledge context since rules can be defined within an ontology. So usually ontologies consist of the four components, classes, you can see here by example of classes like component, plate, or manufacturing process. Also, ontologies consist from relation between two classes or between classes and properties, for example, here. Uh, we have also in ontologies instances. So instances, for example, here, represented of class with a similar characteristic which are grouped together in a class. And rules, here is some example, can be used to describe some special situation, some requirements of domain, which must always be true. So ontologies are form of knowledge representation to provide formalized knowledge for machine services. Again, you see here a diagram which showing the level of semantic maturity, semantic maturity of different knowledge representation already with some connection. So you can see that we can step by step develop uh, ontology and ontology uh, will have some characteristic of controlled vocabulary, taxonomy, Taxonomy plus non-hierarchical relationship give us topical map and topical map together with roles and instances give us ontology. Thus, this slide is intended to illustrate the similarities and differences between the forms of knowledge representation. This diagram show an, a short overview of the format and frameworks that are used to storage data information and knowledge, and also for conceptual description, representation or modeling of information and knowledge. The formats and frameworks are stored according the syntaxes structuring and the formal semantic. 
We will not go into detail today about these formats. It plan to offer you another workshop in the scope of our consortiums. Actually, there is no single correct approach to ontology modeling. That is why uh, you can find in, in the literature a lot of different methods. If you uh, are interested in methodologies for creating ontology, please contact us. Uh, and the development of an ontology is usually a multi-stage iteration process and has large subjective components. Accordingly, there is no one correct uh, ontology, sorry, so you can become at the end some different variants. Also, it's very useful to use some ontology curation tools, some special ontology editors that allow the simplified modeling of an ontology with the help of graphical user interface. You can become some reports also. Uh, so you, here you can see some uh, famous um, tool, Protégé, which was developed by Stanford University. University. This tool has also a web interface, or you can use another tools. So here in this slide, we collected for you information about some existing ontologies that may be useful for you in your professional activities. So we give we will give you this presentation, the slides and you can use the suggested links. On this slide, you can see ontologies that may be interesting to consortiums NFDE for HIMI and NFDE for CAD audiences. And in this slide, we are collected information about ontologies that can be useful in engineering. Here also you can see some information about resources where you can search for relevant ontologies for your domain. Thank you for your attention. So thank you very much, Irina. Thank you very much, Oliver and Court, for the theoretical introduction. I will give my presentation um, as a member of the two collaborative research centers, 1153 and uh, 3068. And in this series, I'm involved in the subproject Information Infrastructure which aims at establishing of an internal research data management system. In this presentation, I would like to talk about the current usage of the ontology um, um, within um, this um, um, sub-projects and um, because uh, the ontology, um, this is um, a fundamental element of the research management systems. So, um, using this slide, I would like to give um, a short introduction to the CRC 1153, Tailored Forming. The objective of this CRC is the development of the novel process chains for the production of hybrid high-performance components, applying the Tailored Forming technology. This technology applies several different thermomechanical processes to manufacture hybrid components with locally adapted properties. On, on this slide, you see the multi-steps process chain characteristic for the tailored forming technology, um, including joining, forming, and finishing um, processes. These research activities are spread over um, 18 projects involving 12 institutes listed here below. Using this slide, I would like to uh, give a short introduction to the CRC 3068 um, called Oxygen-Free Production. And the research objective of this CRC is to gain a fundamental understanding of the processes and mechanism in manufacturing, assembly and handling uh, technology processes under the um, technically complete exclusion of oxygen. This will open up the entirely new research field of oxygen-free production. This CRC have joined 19 sub-projects involving 15 institutes that you can see here below. Yeah, the both um, um, CRCs presented here have different research objectives, 
but they also have several issues in common and face the same um, challenges. For example, the research in both CRCs is carried out in different research groups that cooperate with each other very closely. Each of these groups deal with specific samples and also um, applied different research activities. Each of these groups um, um, carried out transfer of the uh, different samples from one subject to another subject. And um, each of these groups also apply different research um, equipment. Because of the complexity and heterogeneity of the research activities, a high amount of data and information is produced in each of these groups. For example, information about materials, information about um, sample characteristics, information about um, um, different um, process that um, um, executed um, within the CRCs. A lot of different uh, types of protocols um, are also created in, uh, during the research activities. Uh, for example, uh, it could be um, simulation protocols or also experiment protocols. Yeah, the successful realization of the research objectives depends on how well the data exchange and also the data transfer and information flow is organized within the CRCs. Yeah, in order to support the researchers in achieving data information transparency, it's to provide a common and centralized access to the data information, a research data management system um, is established in the both CRCs. This research data management system uh, consists of the two um, of three subsystems. One of them is the knowledge management. Um, this is the system um, based on semantic media wiki software, and um, it is used to create and also to store different kinds of um, protocols on reports uh, from different research activities. The second subsystem um, is called data management system based on CCAN, and this is used um, to store uh, different data gained in different research activities. And the third uh, subsystem um, is Git, and this is used for versioning software scripts and configuration files developed and used in the CRCs. So the main challenge in establishing of this um, research data management system is to bring the heterogeneous data and information gained in all these um, processes into a structured uniform format, which can be interpreted by the subsystems. And to achieve this, data information have to be semantically annotated using a specific ontology that um, we developed to meet the requirements of the both CRCs. So in the next slide, I would like to present some examples that illustrate the usage of ontology within the knowledge management system based on Semantic Media Wiki. So on this slide, you can see the first use case of the ontology. Um, this is the semantic description of samples and their specific characteris uh, characteristics. For example, characteristic like um, a material combination or different kinds of diameter, for example, uh, diameter on actuator side and also um, diameter on sensor side. And also characteristics like unique ID um, that is um, given by the researchers in order to um, um, unique identify a specific sample um, uh, within um, the whole CRC. Furthermore, the ontology is applied to semantically annotate information about the sample transfer from one subproject to another within one manufacturing process chain. This annotation made possible to digitize a sample a control sheet, a previously purely analog process on paper. The implementation of this information on a semantic media wiki page enables all participants of the CRC to see at any time at which position within the process chain a sample, um, a sample is located and um, using this control sheet makes um, also possible to reduce the risk of losing samples within the process chain. 
So the second use case of the ontology uh, is applied to semantically annotate a so-called input and output visual inspection. This kind of inspection carried out on each uh, sample before and after an experiment. This inspection is performed in order to identify some defects um, on um, sample surface and to check the suitability of samples for the appropriate research activities. The ontology involves classes and properties representing different types of, of defects, for example, offset and crack. And this ontology enables also to um, um, annotate um, the exact location of the defect um, on the sample surface and also to um, um, annotate the information about if any corrective action in a process is required. I have two minutes left. Yes. On this slide, I would like to um, present the next ontology use case of digitizing process protocols. Uh, that's for previously created in unstructured form like test document or Excel sheet. On this slide, you can see um, an ontology created for torsion test. And um, it involves um, different kinds of information um, about general um, uh, things like um, test ID, date creator, and also the parameters that um, are observed um, uh, within this test. So the last uh, use case of the ontology is semantic description of research equipment. Uh, we uh, differentiate between machines and tools and they are connected with each other by using the semantic relation is used by machine. So um, these were the main use cases uh, we apply within the research data management system and the BOSS CRCs. And uh, with the last slide, I would like to show you which rule we follow in the development of our ontology. This rule says, um, it's, this rule is very easy and says, uh, don't develop a completely new ontology, um, use the existing ontology as far as possible. And on this slide, uh, I would like to show you uh, the ontologies um, that uh, we have already used in our work. This is the semantic sensor ontology. Um, uh, describing sensors and their observations. Extrude ontology provides different types of information uh, about um, extrude or basic formal ontology, enables uh, to connect different specific ontology uh, with each other. Uh, units of measurement ontology and also provenance ontology uh, that um, enables um, represent information about the provenance, inf uh, yeah, about the provenance. So with this slide, I would like to end my presentation and thank you very much for your attention. So thank you very much, Tatiana, for the great insights of your experiences. Now um, I give the floor to Norbert Kockmann, who will introduce us to the ontology on to Cape. Norbert Kockmann is um, a mechanical engineer by training with university steps at the Technical University of Munich. University of Bremen, University of Freiburg, and industrial steps in process engineering and chemical manufacturing in Germany and Switzerland. Since 2011, he's at the Technical University of Dortmund, the Faculty of Biochemical and Chemical Engineering, Laboratory of Equipment Design. He's in the steering committee of the NFTE for CAT consortium, and they're responsible for the task area on ontology development. So, Mr. Kopman. Yeah, thank you very much for the kind introduction mm -hmm. and uh, I hope you can hear me as well. Um, I will just give you a short overview about the OntoCape system, which we have as a base in NFDI for CAT and uh, how we will proceed with this. So um, first I start with a short overview on our consortium and catalysis, but also process engineering. Um, I will give you then um, short overview about the OntoCape, which was already mentioned as existing ontology in process engineering. So CAPE stands for uh, Computer Aided Process Engineering. Uh, it comes from the uh, Aachen University. Um, Professor Marqua developed that 10, 15 years ago, and it is freely available um, on the web. And we are now currently focusing on heat exchanges and chemical reactions and reactions. Um, first, starting with the NFD for CAT, 
Um, we are under the roof organization of the Dechema. It's a common organization uh, on chemical engineering and equipment, plant technology. Um, it's mainly driven by the universities and societies, GCATS, uh, ProcessNet, and cannot name all uh, the partners. We have also an industrial advisory board, which gives us an input from later applications. And we have close connections to the NFD for ING and the NFD for CHEM so, um, initiatives. Uh, and also on the materials because catalysis is also um, material-based science. The main topic of uh, nsv for cut is to represent the data value chain from catalysis with different, on the microscopic uh, scale, uh, characteristics, data, operando data, synthesis data, and performance data, which has a close link to the chemistry and material part. Uh, and we have the uh, Stuttgart uh, HLRS um, yeah, informatics part for repositories and data management. And on the other side, we have the um, data line to the more engineering part on transport um, phenomena, kinetics, then the process design, reactor design, up to a complete um, plant with catalytic processes. That gives us the link and with heat exchangers, uh, pressure vessel technology to the engineering um, partners. Now I come to the um, AutoCAPE setup, uh, first step into ontology. So we follow that advice, don't develop a new thing, just look what is already available. And that is the AutoCAPE with different already existing um, relations um, here displayed as a meta layer or in a layer system, upper layer and the, the core concept is given here in the middle with um, reactors, process units, separation units, which are at that time were developed for um, process control. So um, controlling um, complex processes, but with um, links to chemistry materials, um, and it is following the aspect system that we have different aspects of a physical or a chemical system which are given here in this ontology. That can be uh, looked in closer detail in a PhD thesis or in uh, working papers. Um, just uh, put this into your search machine and then you will find more information on this. Just as an uh, introduction um, with the aspect system, this has a modular setup because each equipment type, each process step um, is represented as a class and represents then a desired function, which is fulfilled with the chemical system. For example, the plant item um, reflects a physical realization, the process step, the function, the material amount, a physical chemical behavior of a chemical system and a process, which is also given here. And please remember the uh, former presentations, you have the items, then the relation between, so these triples are also given here. Um, looking closer to uh, different uh, aspect systems of a process unit, and uh, subclasses of a process unit. For example, a reactor has a mixing unit, a splitting unit, um, heat transfer unit. So you can go modulary lower in, in the description of your setup. Uh, for example, here the heat exchanger, a heat transfer unit, which has a functional aspect of enthalpy change. So the energy content of a system is changed and the realized units are heat exchangers, so temperature change, but also phase change, condenser and reboiler, which is a major part of a distillation column, which is the only realized separation unit in this system. And the only heat exchanger which is realized here is the shell and tube heat exchanger with different geometrical aspects and different functional aspects. You see this as 
uh, representation in ontology. I will give you later um, 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 protege view of this. Some um, unit behaviors here uh, as a chemical process system is that this mainly characterized the physical chemical phenomena occurring when materials are processed in an equipment, for example, the heat transfer unit behavior with heat loss or heat leak to the environment, heating and cooling um, to a material or the heat transfer uh, connection that uh, energy is transferred. That is also given here as a shell and tube heat exchanger with different um, characteristics the representation in protege is given either as a list, which is uh, shown here. You see here heat transfer rate as a connection, then the behavior as a condenser, heat exchanger, and reboiler. So you will find uh, the items I've shown you before here in this list, but on the next slide also as a mind map structure, where it becomes clear how the rel relations are formed with these arrows. And um, for example, here the heat transfer unit can be a reboiler, a heat exchanger, or a condenser, and a process unit can consist of a heat transfer unit. So here the relations are given, and you see many more. I cannot go into detail. This is the representation then in Protege um, into this setup. The other example I've brought with me is the reactor unit. Um, the definition of a chemical reactor, I think I don't have to repeat this, that we can perform a chemical reaction, but also um, we handle with material amounts. And this is shown here on the right side. And uh, unfortunately, it's only a, a steered vessel reactor represented in the um, onto Cape system. So that was sufficient at that time for controlling larger uh, plants. Um, but when we go to catalysis, that's not sufficient. And then we will just enlarge uh, or widen this uh, ontology for the uh, catalytic purposes. Chemical reaction can also be um, represented in onto Cape with a reaction network. So consisting on, uh, out of elementary reactions or just single reactions, irreversible or reversible reactions. So chemical transformation are already there, but they have to be enlarged by um, the catalytic function. Catalyst is only represented by the cost factor, how much cost the platinum or ruthenium catalyst in my reactor. So we have to do a little bit there for representing real catalysis in this ontology. The chemical reactor module is also displayed here in Protege. Uh, so we have the reactor here with the behavior, the equipment. We can uh, connect them to more engineering parts like wall thickness, material of the wall, and so on, but also to the chemistry with the reaction network, and so on. So this gives a starting point for uh, the representation of our reactor equipment. With this, I'm at, I'm at the end. <laughs> I think I got just the hint. Um, so I gave you an overview about our NFD for CAT uh, consortia um, that we also include the process science, the process engineering part. We just started with the ontology development, so enlarging the on the cape with Protege um, as a base. And we are now collecting the domain knowledge from engineers, from chemists, from catalytic experts, and structuring this knowledge to, as it also was said already, the iterative way to bring this into an ontology structure, setting up metadata, and working with this in our workflow. With this, I'm at the end. Thank you very much, and also for the opportunity to talk here on our activities. Looking forward to the questions. Thank you, Mr. Cockman. Thank you very much for a very interest, interesting introduction of Onto Cape. We are, I was al already saw a question in the chat about we mentioned an um, ontology workshop in 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 summer. So this is um, planned by NFDE for Chem. 
There is no exact date so far, but um, you can see the planned events on the on the websites of the three consortia. What we have seen so far here is just a first short glimpse on ontologies. And um, if you want to dive deeper and if you want perhaps want to be part of modeling the world of your research, because this is, we need you. So we need you to help modeling the right wor world um, to describe your data. So I would kindly ask you to um, fill in two forms that um, you get the links in the chat. So um, the one is for um, just leaving your contact information so that we can contact you if there are new workshops, more, um, more events um, in, this, in this area. And the other one is just for us to evaluate this event. So if your expectations were met and what we can do better the next time. Both of the links are in the chat and please be so kind and follow the links and um, answer the, the questions before you leave this event.